Whether you're trying to hook up your laptop to your TV to give a presentation, show off family pictures and videos, or you simply need a bigger screen, there's quite a few different ways to go about doing it. I'm Jason Cipriani, and in this ZDNet how-to video, I'm gonna show you three different ways you can connect your laptop to your TV. All right, so the most straightforward and easiest way to connect a laptop to a TV is to use an HDMI connection. This is the same connection that your Apple TV box or your Roku streaming stick or Chromecast or, or even a gaming console uses to connect to your TV. Most modern TVs have multiple HDMI ports, but not every laptop has an HDMI port. The new MacBook Pros do, which was something that came back to them, but not all Windows computers do either. It's, it's kind of wishy-washy. So what happens if, let's say, you have a MacBook Air or a Surface Pro 8, which is what I have here on the desk in front of me, you have a couple different options. You can buy like this Anchor 7-in-1 USB-C hub. One end plugs into the USB-C port on your computer, and then there's usually an HDMI port along with a bunch of other ports and whatnot on the adapter. So you plug this in to USB-C port on your computer, connect your HDMI cable to it, and a few seconds later, your screen will show up on your TV. But what if you don't want to deal with the hub? Well, this is my preferred method, to be honest with you. This is an HDMI cable on one end to a USB-C on the other. So all I do is connect the HDMI into the uh, TV's HDMI port, USB-C port to the US or USB-C connector to the USB-C port on a laptop, and it automatically begins showing your display on the TV. Now, if you're mirroring your screen and you want it to extend your desktop or vice versa, you want it to mirror your display so you can give a presentation instead of acting as another desktop, you can go into your system settings on a Mac. That's going to be the system preferences app or settings app, depending on which version of Mac OS display. And you can adjust your settings there. On Windows, you're going to go into settings and then display, and you'll be able to adjust your settings there. All right, now what if you can't use a wired connection in order to connect your laptop to your TV, whether you're in a place where it just isn't possible, you don't have long enough HDMI cable, or you would rather sit on the couch and use your TV as an extended display, but from across the room. You, you can do that. There's a few different ways to go about doing that. Um, I'll start with the Mac first which has a couple different options, but probably the most streamlined option is going to be using some sort of AirPlay enabled device. A lot of smart TVs now have AirPlay built into them, HomeKit slash AirPlay built into them. Uh, you can check your manufacturer by Googling you know, the model number you have or diving into the settings app on your TV. And if you see anything related to Apple, HomeKit or AirPlay, go through the setup process, make sure your TV is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your computer, and then you'll have an, uh, an additional source of where you can mirror or extend your laptop screen on your TV. The other option is, of course, is to buy an Apple TV streaming box, which they just revamped and released a new one. They started at $129 now. It's not hard to find the older generation model for under $100 on Amazon if you keep an eye on deals and sales and flash sales and all that stuff. All right, so I'm gonna show you just really quickly on this uh, M2 MacBook Air, what the process is like to mirror or extend the display to a TV. There's a TV up behind the, the camera. You won't be able to see it, but trust me, it is being mirrored and extended. So what you'll need to do is go into Control Center, which is in the top right corner of your Mac's menu bar. It is uh, a two-line icon that brings up like your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth settings, screen mirroring is one of those options. So find screen mirroring. Click on that. And now you're gonna have a list of all the different devices that are connected to the same Wi-Fi network and nearby that you can use to extend or mirror your laptop screen on. So if I wanted to use uh, either one of these iPads to extend my display as a secondary monitor, I could. But for now, I'm going to connect to the 55 inch TCL Roku TV, which is the most elegant name for a device on my network ever. I know, but below that you see there are actually two Apple TV boxes that are or three that are running that I could then connect to as well. I'm gonna click on the 55 inch TCL Roku TV. All right, when, when I connected 
the Mac to the TV, you saw that the resolution on my MacBook screen changed a little bit, and that's because it's matching the TV now. You can change that again in system settings or system preferences and displays. Uh, during the initial pairing process, you may be asked for a code. It's a four digit code that shows up on the TV and you have to enter it on your Mac just to make sure you're authorized to take over control and put whatever it is on the big screen. Um, but staying here in control center under screen mirroring, you see I have a couple options. I can use the TV as a separate display or the, the default option is mirror built-in liquid retina display. So what you see on my screen right now is exactly what's on the TV. This can go either way. If you use it as a separate display, it treats the TV as a backup desktop or a secondary desktop that you could open other apps in while still having your own stuff available here on the main screen. And as you can see, once I selected that, this went back to the normal resolution it usually is, and now the TV has a blank desktop. To disable screen mirroring, you come back into the same control panel section and you click on the device you're connected to and instantly it is disconnected. When it comes to connecting a Windows laptop or PC to a TV, there are quite a few different ways to do this wirelessly and in all honesty, they can get very complicated. What it basically distills and boils down to is this. You need a smart TV or a streaming device that supports Chromecast or casting in some fashion. Miracast is an older name. Uh, some TVs have that built in. Chromecast is the newer name or casting. You need to have some sort of setup there that supports that as far as the TV goes or streaming device. Secondly, the easiest way to do this is to use Chrome as your browser instead of adding a wireless display in Windows 11's settings panel. I've tried it, I've messed with it. It's very convoluted and there are many caveats to that process. Whereas the Chrome solution is built in and you aren't locked into only casting a display, but you could also cast your entire desktop. So I'll walk you through that process now. I don't have a TV nearby that has casting enabled, although this Roku TV shows up sometimes and sometimes it doesn't, which is what I mean when I say this can be a very convoluted process. So I'm gonna use this Nest Hub Max that I have sitting on the table here. It's pretend it's a TV, it's gonna act the same way, the functions here, the controls, the steps, identical to connecting to a Chromecast enabled TV. All right, so with Chrome installed, and a website pulled up, it doesn't matter which website, what you'll do is click on the three dot icon in the top right corner of Chrome and scroll down and find cast, click on that. Now you have a list of options here. I have a living room TV, which is a cast enabled TV in a different building here. Uh, the office display, which is this one, and then that 55 inch TCL Roku TV, which is up above the camera, but it's available for specific video sites and not casting entirely. Again, forget it. I'm not even gonna go into it. So before I click on office display to put what I see on this Surface Pro 8 onto this display here, I'm gonna click on sources. And this is important because if you do this in the opposite order, you have to undo everything and then redo it. So click on sources, click on cast screen, and now click on the display you want to connect to. A Little bit of a delay, it's not instant. You're not gonna to wanna to use this for gaming. Absolutely not, it's too much of a lag and too much of a delay. If you're using it with an HDMI cable or a wired connection, yeah, it's perfect for gaming. Now, if I wanna stop casting, see the casting icon here in the, uh, just to the right of the address bar, click on that click on the office display again, and now it's no longer casting. Now, if I only wanted to cast the current tab I have highlighted, you would leave sources at cast tab, click on the device, and then it doesn't matter what else I do on the Surface Pro 8, only that current Chrome tab is going to show up on whatever device, TV, you have your laptop connected to. All right, and one other thing. The same Chrome trick with Chrome and, or yeah, Chrome and Chromecast works on a Mac as well. It's not as streamlined and as polished as it is here on a Windows PC because of reasons. We don't know. I messed with it before filming this just to double check. 
it's pretty janky for the lack of a better term. Uh, you want to use AirPlay if you're using a Mac to wirelessly connect to a TV. On a PC, Chrome is your best bet using a Chromecast enabled device, whether it's a TV, a Nest Hub Max, or any other streaming device like a Roku or Chromecast itself. Once again, this was how to connect your laptop to your TV three different ways, three very simple ways. And I'm Jason Cipriani. Thanks for watching this ZDNet how to video. Make sure to check out more how to tips just like this one, as well as the latest tech news on ZDNet.com.